All right, after a bit of hiatus, I'm back with the next analysis of the eight pieces of brocade. And we're now on to the one known as Sway the Head and Swing the Tail. Remember, I'm not a doctor, physical therapist, medical professional of any kind, an artist, or any of those things. Uh, this is something that I'm interested in and take it all with a grain of salt and I give the reference to the end so you can look up things yourself. Alright, so let's take a movement from the front. It involves first tilting off to either side, right or left, then bending at the hips, rotating back towards the other side, and then tilting back to a straight posture. And now again from the rear. Now we see the same movement from the side. Now let's take a look at the muscles involved from the front view. First up is we have the vastus medialis, which goes from the knee all the way up to the front of the femur and connects also into the adductor muscles. Next we have the rectus femoris, which crosses two joints, the knee and the hip joint, and goes up the center of the leg crossing the knee, joint, the patella, and connecting up into the iliac spine. And then we have the vastus lateralis, which goes along the outside of the leg, from the knee also connecting to the patella, up into the outside of the femur. These three muscles along with the vastus intermedius are commonly known as the quadriceps muscles. These muscles function to extend the knee, with the exception of the rectus femoris, which also flexes the hip. So next up we have the sartorius muscle, which is the longest muscle in the body, and goes from the front top of the pelvis, an area called the anterior superior iliac spine, on a thin person, that's the part of the hip that you can see protrude a little bit at the uh, top of their hip, and it goes all the way down to the front inside of the tibia. This muscle can act as both a hip and knee flexor. Uh, the common function of this muscle is seen when you're sitting cross-legged. The knee is flexed and the hip is flexed and the hip is also externally rotated which is another function of the sartorius muscle. Next is the pectineus muscle which goes from the pubic bone into the femur, travels a short distance, and is responsible for both hip flexion and hip adduction, which is bringing your femur in towards the center of the body. We have the very important psoas muscle, or the iliopsoas, which is a combination of the iliacus muscle and the psoas muscle. The psoas connects all the way into the lumbar spine and then travels down into the femur and it is responsible for hip flexion but also is influential to respiratory function and pelvic floor function. Next up we have the adductor longus which goes from the pubic bone just to the side of the pubic symphysis which is where both uh, parts of the pelvis come together and down to the middle third of the back of the femur. This muscle is responsible for uh, flexion, adduction, and external rotation of the femur. And then we have the adductor magnus, which is the largest of the adductor muscles, and is actually split into two parts, an adductor part and a hamstring part. This is due to the fact that the muscle both goes down the medial, medial or inside part of the thigh, and also the posterior part, or the back side of the thigh. The adductor part flexes, adducts, and externally rotates the femur, while the hamstring part can internally rotate the femur and put it in extension. Okay, and the last few muscles that we'll go through are the gracilis, which goes from the pubic bone down to the medial or inside part of the tibia, and it takes part in hip adduction, hip flexion, and then both hip and knee internal rotation and even knee flexion. We have the semimembranosus which is the largest of the hamstring muscles and that goes from the istrial tuberosity which is on the back side of the pelvis, the little hoop part of the pelvis, down to the tibia. And this muscle 
takes part in extending the hip and flexing the knee. And then last we have the external and internal oblique muscles which make up the rectus sheath as we mentioned before in previous videos and that connects into the ribs and goes all the way down to the pelvis forming the inguinal ligament. These muscles produce trunk flexion and trunk rotation and are involved in pelvic tilt both lateral and posterior and anterior pelvic tilt. Alright now from the front view we'll go through and look at the joint positions and see if we can imply the various states of the muscle. So the movement starts in a half squat kind of uh, horse riding like position. Knees are bent, hips are slightly bent, but the torso is straight up. From there there is a lean or rotation to one side just before bending at the hip. If we look at this simplified diagram on the right, we see how the adductors pull the hip on that same side up by pulling the pelvis towards the femur. In this case, the femur is fixed, not moving, so it tilts the pelvis up, creating adduction. The corresponding abductor muscles on that same side in turn have to be relaxed and stretched. And depending how the practitioner practices his movement, there could be a bit of activation in the external obliques as the person rotates the body to that side. Now let's look at the case where the person rotates more instead of tilts or leans at the waist. In this case the muscles which control internal rotation of the hip are activated and those will be activated on the side that the individual is rotating to and the opposite side will be the side that is stretched so it will be an external rotation. From here, you continue to bend at the waist until the torso is roughly parallel to the floor. Then turning to the other side, putting the opposite hip into adduction and the same hip into abduction. From here, the same muscles used at the beginning of their exercise to lower the body are then used to lift the body up to an upright position. Now the exercise repeats, this time on the other side. The adductors on the other side of the body are now activated when lowering and lifting back up to an upright position. Now moving on to a rear view of the movement. Now we can see the muscles on the back of the leg, starting with the biceps femoris, which goes from the estial tuberosity down to the fibula. And this would be along the back outside of the thigh. And now the biceps femoris is actually made up of two heads, both connect to the fibula. One is the short head, it goes into the femur, and the other one actually goes up to the pelvis. Next we have the semitendinosus, which is located medially, or to the towards the inside of the thigh, next to the biceps femoris. And that goes from the ischial tuberosity in the pelvis down to the tibia. And then we have the gluteus maximus, which connects to the sacrum, the back side of the pelvis, and goes into the IT band and as well as the femur. And there's a couple muscles involved on the back in the, in the torso area, namely because of their connection to the thoracolumbar fascia, that's the latissimus dorsi, and the erector spine muscles. So as the person tilts over to the one side and bends at the hip, the gluteus maximus is eccentrically activated and I've shown the hamstrings as stretched but they also could be eccentrically activated as well. While the torso is parallel to the floor the erector spine muscles are also engaged to prevent the torso from bending. After reaching the other side both the glutes and most likely the hamstrings as well uh, concentrically activate to raise the torso up to an upright position. Now let's take a look from this side where we can better view the glutes and hamstrings in action. If you look at the diagram here on the right, the, we see how the hamstrings connect to the back of the pelvis and they are stretched when the pelvis is flexed and the knee is straight. So depending how deep the person's stance is, will determine how much the hamstrings will be involved. 
in terms of tensional and or fascial lines we can see a continual line going from the oblique muscle down through the opposite glute muscle being it's that the femur is now abducted and curving around into the adductor muscle with both the rectus sheath and thoracolumbar fascia acting as a sort of interface between left, right, and top and bottom. From the rear we see how this force from the internal oblique wraps around and ties into the thoracolumbar fascia and transfers force over to the other side into the gluteus maximus and glute medius as they're abducting the other femur. The fibers of the gluteus maximus crisscross across the uh, sacrum and then also are tied into the fascia lata which is the overall fascia that encases the thigh. Thus we have the adductor muscles also tying into the fascia lata as well. At the midpoint of the exercise we see how there's tension along the back line of the body with the erector spine being engaged to prevent the torso from folding or going into flexion and the glutes preventing the hip from going into further flexion and depending on the amount of flexion in the knee the hamstrings will contribute as well here's the references I use so check them out if you're interested and if you enjoyed this video like and subscribe you can find me on YouTube and Instagram